Big name consulting firms like McKinsey, Bain, and BCG all do one thing really well. They create amazing presentations for their clients. But it's not just the formatting and design that makes these presentations so special. It's the story they tell. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to take your presentation and turn it into a story with clear takeaways, compelling insights, and an engaging narrative. I'll walk through each step of the storytelling process in detail and show you a couple examples of what this looks like in the real world. All that and more coming up. Hi everyone, my name is Paul and I'm an instructor at The Analyst Academy. We provide advanced PowerPoint presentation design and data visualization training to consulting, strategy, and finance teams. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you visit us at theanalystacademy.com. When building a presentation, regardless of who the audience is, you have one primary goal, to make it as easy as possible for the audience to understand what you're trying to tell them. And this can be difficult. Business presentations tend to have a lot of data and information, and it can be hard for the audience to grasp the key insights right away, especially if they're trying to also listen to the speaker and think about what they're gonna say in response. So when building your deck, it's especially important to make sure it's structured in a way that makes it clear, insightful, and engaging. It's something top consulting firms do really well, thanks in part to two important concepts, the SCQA framework and the pyramid principle. In simple terms, SCQA is just a framework for presentations that allows you to craft a story around the information you're trying to present. It stands for situation, complication, question, and answer. Every presentation is an answer to some question, such as, should we acquire this company? Or how did this marketing campaign perform? Or even, what did you find in your research? And the SCQA framework just allows you to provide context for that answer. Practically speaking, this means that your main deck is used to show your answer and the situation, complication, and question are how you provide context for that answer. Let's consider an example. Let's say you're on a consulting case for Disney. The executives have asked you to make a recommendation for where they should build their next theme park. The main part of your presentation will be the actual recommendation and all the supporting details. But then the situation, complication, and question will form your introduction slide. The situation is how things are right now. The complication represents a change in that situation and is the reason why the presentation is needed. The question is what gets raised by the complication and what needs to be solved. Then the answer is the resolution. So here, the situation might be something like, Disney's looking to grow revenue by opening a new park. The complication could be, they need to decide where to open this park, which then leads to the implicit question, which is, where should Disney open its next theme park? Then the main part of your deck answers this question. And notice how this brings the presentation to life. It puts the presentation in context and it tells the audience why they should care. Instead of just dropping them in the middle of your data, you're leading them along and creating a narrative. Remember, your goal is to make it as easy as possible for the audience to understand what you're trying to tell them. Consulting firms in particular do this really well. Let's take a look at an example from BCG. The presentation is for a nonprofit organization that invests in open education resources, or OER which are basically education resources that are made available to everyone. And here's the introduction slide. Notice how they've titled it Context of the Work, because really that's what it is. They're just giving context before diving into the presentation. The first line says, since the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation began investing in open education resources in 2012, the field has grown significantly. The past decade has seen an influx of OER and increased awareness and adoption. And notice how this just clearly and plainly explains a steady state situation how things are right now, and this is our situation. Then the next line says, however, and by the way, that should be your clue that a complication's coming, the word however. However, more work remains to push the OER movement from the sidelines of mainstream education into the center of the classroom. Okay, so now we have our complication. Things are looking good for OER, however, more work remains. And already you can see how this is setting up the presentation. Situation leads to the complication, and the complication very naturally leads to the question, which is right here. The foundation engaged the Boston Consulting Group in late 2012 to evaluate the state of the current ecosystem in the United States and to help understand how to measure the movement's progress towards a sustainable mainstream end state. Now, although they don't state the question explicitly, you can see it in the text. The question is, what is the state of the current ecosystem in the US and how can we measure the movement's progress? And now we have the right setup for the presentation and we're ready to hear the answer. Everyone is on the same page and the audience is ready to go. It might seem like a small piece of the presentation, but all the major consulting firms use this framework to turn what otherwise might be a dry presentation into a persuasive story with a clear narrative. So that brings us to the second important concept, the pyramid principle. If you've watched our other videos or taken some of our advanced courses, you'll know that we talk about the pyramid principle a lot. 
especially as it relates to slide structure. But here I'm going to focus on how it applies to storyboarding and the presentation as a whole. Put simply, the pyramid principle is just a way of communicating information where you start with the main idea and then provide the supporting details and data of that idea. Going back to our Disney example, the main idea would be on top, then the two supporting points would be below that. If you recall, the question is, where should Disney build a new theme park? Let's say that your answer is that Disney should build a new theme park in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Then two supporting reasons for that answer might be that Rio is a major tourist destination and that the Disney brand is strong in Brazil. And if you wanted, you could continue creating additional layers to your pyramid with more supporting details and data. In a presentation, the way you would communicate this is from top to bottom. And the reason why that approach is so effective is because you provide the audience with context first before giving them more granular detail. Plus it helps the audience know exactly what you're trying to tell them and how you've reached each of your conclusions. Remember, your main goal is to make it as easy as possible for the audience. If you were to turn each of these ideas into its own slide, you would rearrange them like this, with the highest level ideas coming first, then the supporting details following each. Then throw your introduction slide up front and voila, you've got yourself a story. And this is the exact approach they use at every major consulting firm to build client presentations that are incredibly clear, compelling, and persuasive. Now, it doesn't always look exactly like this. In practice, there are lots of factors that can influence the final version of a deck. Not to mention other slides that I didn't talk about like an executive summary slide, next step slides, or the appendix. But generally speaking, this approach works really well. In fact, did you notice it's the same approach I used for this video? I started the video by stating the situation. I said that when you build a presentation, you wanna make it as easy as possible for the audience. Then I introduced a complication. Business presentations tend to have a lot of data and information, so making it clear can be difficult. The implicit question then became, how can you make your data-heavy presentations easy to understand? Then I moved on to my answer, which was to provide a clear structure to your presentation using two key concepts, the SEQA framework and the pyramid principle. And I used this structure to then build out and explain my answer. The end result, I hope, is a video that's clear, easy to follow, and insightful. But you'll have to let me know what you thought down in the comments. If you think you or your team could benefit from learning how to consistently build high quality, persuasive presentations for clients, internal stakeholders, or anyone else, make sure you check out our advanced courses at theanalystacademy.com. Each course is carefully crafted with clear and actionable insights, multiple real life examples and case studies, hands-on exercises, quizzes, downloads, and a whole lot more. We sell courses to individuals, corporate strategy and finance teams, as well as consulting firms of all sizes. If that's not for you, then no worries. We've got lots of great free content on YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, and over on our blog, so make sure you check those out as well. Thanks again for watching and best of luck in your own slide making.